Hey guys, welcome to Weekly Weird News with a, a special guest that refused to come back for the last episode of Tugs, but was, for whatever reason, completely fine showing up for a different show. I don't know where I am half the time. Well, I, I agree. it is summer I agree and you're wearing, a, you're wearing a skull cap in summer, so. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's nice and air conditioned in here, dude. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, cool. <laughs> yeah, hey. Brett, Brett's here. It's, it's Hundar, everyone. Yeah, well, you know, I wear this beanie to all of the big Hollywood orgies, and, and, and big Hollywood orgies have always been this kind of legendary whisper throughout entertainment media, and it's always been a bit debatable whether or not any specific story or rumor is true. Mm -hmm. But old school Hollywood definitely seems ripe for these kinds of tales because it just makes sense that all these free spirits were probably a little more inclined to partake in a swinging lifestyle. Yeah. You know, there were even rumors for a while that secret tunnels were dug throughout the Hollywood Hills that lead directly to the Playboy Mansion so that celebrities in the 70s and 80s could slip in and out unnoticed. In and out. Woo! Nice. That whole thing was debunked as an April Fool's joke, though, but obviously sharper minds know that releasing the blueprints of your sex tunnels on April Fool's Day is the perfect cover-up. It makes complete sense. Yes. It's one. It's a fun conspiracy. Yeah. There's a lot of sad conspiracies out there. This is a fun one. Yeah, people want to just believe in a nice fun one. Like, yeah, oh, it breaks up the, uh, the whole, like, well, Tower 7. <laughs> it's yeah. like, eh, let's talk about sex tunnels. It's more yeah. fun. Yeah. Uh, now, our only experience with what an orgy would even look like, or what the standards and protocols of such an occasion would be, would come to us either thanks to Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut, or literally any video under the orgy category on Pornhub. That's a wide range, too, of like art masks and just like... Yeah. Bachelor a, party go daddy. Much like conspiracy theories, there is a class system that goes from <laughs> just sad to extravagant. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyways, research be damned, it seems like, at least at the higher end gatherings, that, you know, disguising your identity is something which was not only encouraged by many of these parties, but sometimes mandatory because the more affluent guests, they probably don't want to get noticed. Sometimes this meant a mask, other times, possibly a different persona entirely. Ooh, wow. Well, regardless of the rumors or the rules of such an affair, these things actually did happen. Mm -hmm. And while we can't confirm whether or not a disguise was required in any number of them, there was one Hollywood orgy in the 60s where role play was absolutely not allowed. How do we know this, you're probably asking? Well, a few years before his death, Adam West spoke about one such encounter during an interview with Sci-Fi about his role as Batman during the very campy mid-1960s live-action TV series. Mm -hmm. Now, the interview is obviously a few years old since, well, you know, he's dead. Yeah. But for some reason, this story found a new spark over the past week, so why not bask in its very product-of-its-time weirdness? Yeah, so the interview itself starts out very boilerplate with questions about the show itself because it was promoting the release of all 120 episodes of the classic series to Blu-ray and DVD. Uh, what was your toughest line? What was your favorite episode? All boring stuff that's probably been answered dozens of times over the year, years, and uh, also, why not spice this interview up when these are the questions you're getting and you're Adam West and you're very old? So, you know what? Give the interviewer something to work with here, right? Sure. Anyways, that's what he did, because a, a seemingly innocuous question about one of Adam West's co-stars gave way to a tale about two in-character movie stars ending up at an orgy. So following his answer to favorite episode, where he mentioned one with the Riddler, played by Frank Gorshin, he was asked about his favorite memory of Frank, and, uh, yeah, this is what he said. Well, I think one of my favorite memories is that Frank and I were invited to a party one night and we decided to go. A Hollywood party we didn't know anything about. We were kind of laughing and having a few beers and he said, let's go over there. We walked in and it was an orgy. So I immediately went into the Batman character and Frank went into the Riddler character because we were getting the big giggles. <laughs> it was so funny to us what we walked into. And we were kicked out. We were expelled from the orgy. <laughs> They were banned. Like, excuse me, sir, if you want to stick around, can yeah. you please yeah. not walk sideways up the side of my mansion? It's very <laughs> strange. But not only is the idea of Batman and the Riddler, first of all, working together to make yeah. people laugh, yeah. but also going together to an orgy, then getting kicked out of that orgy for refusing to break character, yeah. uh, and then you know doing that to essentially mock the whole orgy in general, not only is that Hilarious, but it's also very funny because the interview, uh, they just kind of skirt over that response entirely and make no mention of it immediately after he lets that juicy little morsel slide. The interview literally goes from Adam West saying, yeah, we found an orgy, got into character, joked around for a while, and were kicked out for mocking the whole sex fest, to the interview saying, cool, least favorite episode? 
It's like above his pay grade, dude. The interviewer's like, dude, I'm doing interviews for a box set of yeah. fucking 1960s Batman. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dive in. This, this is not gonna serve me in or any way. Or he just way. like, he he knows how boring these type of questions are, so he probably just blanked out through the entire answer. Just autopilot. And it's like, yeah, and then what was your least favorite? Wait, hold, what, uh, excuse me? It's too late, you already uh, asked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. So, uh, well, moving on. Wait, 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 hold on. What was his least favorite episode? Oh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't read that part. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, I, moving on and what we can only imagine was an attempt to figure out exactly where babies come from. A Polish environmental group slapped a GPS tracker onto the back of a stork sometime last year to track its migratory habits, AKA where it goes to pick up the babies. <laughs> Where is Baby Island? <laughs> We're gonna find out finally. Finally, science has come far enough yeah. where we can figure out where babies come we from. Take, we take like urban legends really seriously and we, and we can solve them, finally. Yeah. Well, you know, they got their answer. And yeah. now every time your kids ask, where do babies come from? You can say, the Blue Nile Valley in Eastern Sudan. Obviously. I mean, that's a pretty good guess. If, yeah. you, if that was in your head already, good job. Well, obviously that's not what makes this story strange because everyone actually knows that kids are stored in your balls. Yeah. I mean, that's... It's, it's a known fact, I yeah. guess. While it is true that their investigation into the migratory habits of the stork did yield the results they were looking for, it also resulted in a surprise visit from the telecom company who presented them with an extremely high phone bill of $2,700 in US. If they're in a different country, it's a different currency, but $2,700. Uh, that which, yeah, we're sure came as a shock to them since they were simply pinging the device every once in a while to track this thing's movements. And when they looked into the details of the bill, they found out what really happened. After traveling nearly 4,000 miles to eastern Sudan, someone grabbed the bird, took the SIM card out of its GPS tracker, put it in their own phone, and then made 20 hours worth of phone calls with it. <laughs> what do you mean I have to bundle my data service with my phone plan? We're never gonna use it to call the stork. <laughs> Sir, I'm sorry, that's the only plan we have. <laughs> That is such extra credit crime. <laughs> you, not, you Holy shit, a bird with a GPS tracker. Yeah, I'm going to profit on this. Time to make some <laughs> phone calls. Well, the best part is that during an interview with a local news outlet, the environmental group said they basically weren't aware of any of this for months and just assumed the bird loved the weather because they said his last trail ends in Sudan in the Nile Blue Valley. Apparently the bird liked it very much because his transmitter did not move from Sudan until the end of April. And then suddenly the signal disappeared. Whoops. Well, uh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> no word on if the cell company will let this issue slide for the nonprofit group. Probably not, though, because telecoms are usually shitty. Yeah. Wow. You're not paying for some guy's conversations. You just try and solve the mysteries of life, and then, yeah, yeah you get. And then the mysteries of life solve you. Whoa. <laughs> it's very deep. <laughs> Moving on, though, meet Masafumi Nagasaki, an 82 year old man who decided to leave the hustle and bustle of modern life behind to live as a castaway on a remote, uninhabited island south of Japan and just east of Taiwan. Nagasaki successfully lived his dream of being left alone for nearly 30 years before the man came to pick him up and bring him back to Japan under the assumption that he was falling ill. Which, all things considered, that's actually pretty cool because it seems like they were just totally fine with him fucking off to live on an island all by himself until people reported him looking sick at some point. 30 years later. They were, seems like they were pretty okay with it. They're like, fine, do whatever you want. Well, I mean, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna fucking come after him? You can't live on an island by yourself. Not with my tax dollars. <laughs> well, obviously, throughout his time on the island, he learned to live for himself by finding shelter, gathering his own food and drinkable water. He also enjoyed the freedom of being naked all the time because hell, who wouldn't? Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, if you're gonna go for it, go for it. Yeah, who's gonna see you? Yeah, the birds, the stork with a cell phone fucking attached to it. Making a call just like that white woman at the barbecue. <laughs> there is a naked man on this island. <laughs> Someone needs to come stop this. Yeah, well, hey, lady, nobody cares. Lady, get a life. Yeah. Apparently he only intended to escape there for a couple years, but fell in love with the lifestyle. And when he was located a few years back by a documentary filmmaker, Mr. Nagasaki explained his reasons for leaving society saying, in civilization, people treated me like an idiot and made me feel like one. On this island, I don't feel like that. Here on the island, I don't do what people tell me to do. I just follow nature's rules. You cannot dominate nature, so you have to obey it completely. He doesn't sound like an idiot, he sounds very wise. Sounds like stoic, uh, like the man you seek out on the mountaintop to learn. He even apparently, maybe they did this for the documentary, but it shows him like marking the days on a wall, just like in a movie. And there's just like hundreds of white check marks. But if you're trying to escape, why mark the days? Like marking days- He's not like trying to escape. He's just like, I think it's like his calendar. 
but who cares? No, oh, I, <laughs> Why do you need a calendar if you're, na oh, nature geez. doesn't have a calendar. It's my brother's birthday. I'll send him a coconut. Send him a fuck yeah. I don't understand what's the point. Either you're trying to escape well, society's you tie the coconuts rules. To the, to the swallows and they bring it all the way over there. And this then... is like fan fiction. You're writing fan fiction about the news. I story. do that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyways, back to the real story. Uh, he, he, the guy, he actually wasn't uh, completely without some help from modern society, though, as you could have gathered by us saying that people reported him looking ill. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like in the middle of nowhere. But aside for, from actually foraging his own food and gathering rainwater to drink with buckets. Buckets? Nature doesn't have buckets. Maybe he made one out of uh, like, uh, you know, like a bamboo or something it like that. It better be a bamboo bucket. I want, he better, and I don't want the hypocrisy Well, here. you're gonna hate this then, because uh, besides all that, actually putting in the work, besides all that, he would also, you know, throw some clothes on and take a boat to an island close by to buy extra food and drinking water. Wow, wow, wow. So all in all, it sounds like a pretty cushy deal. I mean, it'd be, it's one that people would probably be interested in if they knew they could at least survive on a day-to-day -day basis, knowing, you know, go over to the other island, stock up on food every once in a while. Yeah, ooh, the harsh laws of nature where I go to the Piggly Wiggly on the other island and stock up. It's the only Piggly Wiggly <laughs> yeah. that exists out of the southern United States. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, over there in Taiwan. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. yeah, regardless, uh, Mr. Nagasaki, he had hoped to eventually die on that island, saying, and this is dark, but a direct quote, I want to be killed by a typhoon so no one can try to save me. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to happen, thanks to the jerks who reported him to the police. Looking at you, permit patty. Wow. Fucking bitch. Yeah. So now he's just going to be miserable, yeah. thank, thanks to society. He can't go back, that's it? Yeah, I, I, he's probably gonna die a lot sooner than if they just let him on the island. They put him in old person jail now? You can't yeah, go Yeah, it's back? like, what the fuck? The guy's gonna be miserable. That's sad, dude. Let him go to his island back and forth. Yeah. Time it out for the next typhoon. He just put him on die. a little raft. He wanted to die in a typhoon. You think he's scared about getting the flu? <laughs> no, not He wanted all. to die violently. <laughs> I just like that it's like, so no one can save me. Yeah. Not even like, oh, I got wished away. Not even away. A, mission, a mission, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it also like leads to the fact that like, people knew he was doing this and they just seemed to be fine with it. Yeah. They need to send another young person there to live their whole life there. Yeah, or like someone should kidnap him and bring him back to yeah. the island and leave kidnap him Kidnap this man. Yeah, he'll go along with it. He's not gonna fight you, he's old. Yeah. Well, speaking of Japan though, and an update to our weekly Weird World Cup segment, that's like almost a tongue twister. Mm -hmm. We have news about one of those psychic animals that seem to always correctly predict the outcome of major sporting events. Mm -hmm. Well, we are deeply sorry to report to you that Rabio, the psychic octopus who correctly predicted Japan's win against Colombia, their draw with Senegal, and their loss to Poland has not only been killed at the height of his career, but was chopped up and sold at market by the fishermen who caught him. You know, Sad. we're always betrayed by the ones we, who, you know, we love. Yeah. Those closest to us are the first to swing that fucking cleaver, man. The public was actually pretty shocked by this. They're like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. You like, can't, let this one go. Yeah, you can't like take an animal, give it like human characteristics and a name and make everybody fall in love with it. And then one day it's be like, all right, so anyways, lunch. Adding insult to injury was the fact that after Rabio the Psychic Octopus was killed and sold off. His legal name. <laughs> no, never name your food. It's a bad idea. Yeah. After, the, after he was killed and sold off, the Japanese team were knocked out of the World Cup entirely, which is almost certainly the result of a curse laid upon them during the creature's final moments of life as one final fuck you, which only further proves that this octopus was actually psychic because it knew it was gonna die, so it cursed the team before yeah. it left this earth. Yeah. It all makes perfect sense now, and I feel so bad for whoever ended up eating this thing at a sushi restaurant or something because they're gonna be cursed forever too. Yeah, didn't, didn't you know? Or they're gonna be really good at soccer, like a, like a new superhero. Yeah, or like just like online gambling, like it conferred its abilities there. Well, listen, let's get into the weirdest, truest headlines for this week from around the world, starting with... The blessed town of Dildo is opening a brewery. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so this is Dildo, Newfoundland. <laughs> Apparently there's a bunch of funny names for towns up there, yeah. but they, this brewery, they open up and obviously, you should be like, all right, so what are you gonna call your beers? Yeah. And they were very adamant that they were not taking any, <laughs> any suggestions. suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know? <laughs> the locals were like very excited. They're like, oh, cool. Yeah. Let's have a part in this brewery by giving it some funny names. Yeah. And uh, they were like, no. And all the names are very boring, except for the dildo stout. Uh, the, the dildo stout. 
I like at least at the very least you should have done like the double entendre IPA, like yeah, a double yeah. IPA. You can hint at it without it going full, you know, full. Or just uh, really lean into it. Yeah, like that Bodie McBoatface shit. Bodie McBoatface. Yeah, it's like the orgy. Like, why have an orgy if you're not gonna laugh throughout the orgy? Yeah, if Adam West shows up to your orgy, like, yeah. it's time to cut That's loose huge. a little bit. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Well, buzz kills, dude. Everywhere you go. A massive object devastated Uranus a long time ago and it never fully recovered. <laughs> I wonder what that massive object was. I'll tell you, it was my face. Okay, can we add that on? Put Uranus and put my face beside it and now slam my face into Uranus. I'm sorry to all the aliens that got destroyed, but you know, um, my crippled army needed a home. A new home. Mother Earth was not happy with us anymore. It all happened at TanaCon. In TanaCon, it was like, there's too much people. Remove all the cripples. So all the cripples had to go in this stupid fucking spaceship. And we had to go up into space, into Uranus, crash there, and, you know, kill everyone off. Now we live happily ever after creating Twitter videos for uh, killer Keemstar. But in all seriousness, that's the Fucking space, man. Space is scary. Science is fucking scary. Some fucking object can come into Earth right now and kill us all, and we wouldn't know it, because we'd be dead, including my cat. North Korea's Kim Jong-un wants to completely eliminate manual labor. And when I read this, I obviously assumed that he meant murder every worker in the country. Yeah, like, he wants to completely eliminate manual labor for, like, anyone in his, like, cabinet. Yeah, he's like, hey, no, everyone, let's kill everyone that has a job. Yeah. And then just start over. <laughs> Call the herd. Yeah, great. But realistically, it's because he wants to, like, put robots in and shit. Because they uh. profitability and, you know, maybe he's thinking, like, hey, maybe we're going to get some trade deals with the U.S. Ooh, and uh, okay. So he wants to modernize a bit and, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen to the workers. Yeah, uh, not good. Somali militant group Al Shabab announced his ban on single-use plastic bags. Well, that's nice. It's the, uh, they're like a offshoot of Al Qaeda. Uh-huh. And they are banning plastic bags, single-use pl plastic bags. They cite the reason is because of environmental concerns. There you go. Guys, see, if if something can bring together Al Shabab and the Ralphs in you know Hollywood, California, maybe we can really make things, you know, we can we can solve the world's dilemmas, okay? Yeah. Get look out for planet Earth. The even the article went in to say like People are very confused about how they're going to be enforcing this, but based on their track <laughs> <I'm not>. record, <laughs> based on their track record, you could assume that if you use a yeah. fucking plastic bag, you're going to get murdered. Great. I mean, listen, it's just, that's what it takes, you know, to just lay down the law and finally take care of this problem. They're guys. like, have you seen this floating plastic pile in the Pacific Ocean? We don't want to be responsible yeah. for that. Trash island? No. Uh, even we have rules. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's good. It's good to have. We don't uh, want the, the Al Shabab name. <laughs> The brand. <laughs> the Al Shabab brand yeah, is getting on. ruined. Come on, man. Hey, props, I, I guess. <laughs> Dead woman found alive in morgue. And this seems to happen way more than it should. Yeah, it's 2018. This is not scary stories to tell in the dark. Also, uh, it's not just like some dude's like, ah, she's probably dead. Let's take her down to the morgue. It's it, You have medical professionals who you would assume read the pulse yeah. or do whatever. The, the, she was only found alive because like one of the morgue workers was going through and like, I guess you do a random check on the bodies to make sure they're still there or something. She was in a cabinet? Yeah, and he pulled like, her out boom, and she boom, was boom. breathing. Wow, dude. He's just like, lucky he came by, I guess. Juggalos beat facial recognition software, <laughs> which makes complete sense. Yeah, that's with or without like makeup? No, that's with makeup. Okay, so cool. Obviously, yeah, it was right? some guy that like ran uh, one of the facial recognition software programs and uh, was able to correctly identify uh, Violent J and Shaggy 2Dope without makeup. <laughs> but when they're in makeup, it couldn't identify them. And it was like, they did. he did, I think, a couple more with other Juggalos. Uh, originally, I thought that maybe it was like Juggalos beat, beat it because they spray Fago into the whatever camera <laughs> is, is doing it. Just just, it. Yeah, it's all like the circuits get fry and stuff, but <laughs> no. But it, it creates a new problem for like the NSA and CIA. Mm. They have to overcome this because as we all know, they've been fighting it for years, but Juggalos are still listed on the National Gang Registry. Yeah. Wow. But, and they're the only one to beat it, I think, so far. Wow. Mm hmm I, it's really uh, something. Yeah, that's about all I can say about it. Just, yeah, look, look out, guys. Yeah. Uh, male genitalia graffiti so large you can see it from space. Is this like a corn crop? No, like it's a, just a giant fucking dick like burned into the earth. 
burned into the earth. It's like a dick and balls. Oh. Yeah. Why did that? They do that. It's, it's, like, a, it's a goof. <laughs> it's a goof. Where'd they burn it into? Like a grassy field? Or yeah, like it was just a field. Someone's corn crops. No, it wasn't like a. It wasn't like the corn thing. This is just uh, like a crop this circle. Is, well, no, I think I, they just I, poured gasoline and just yeah, like lit it up. Or just like a field somewhere. Yeah. Just a goof on planet Earth. Just like to the you know, be like, you know, be hilarious if like someone flew over in a plane and saw this on probably my property. Yeah. Like <laughs> that is hilarious. You know yeah. what? Actually, and they saw it from space, so that's, that's cool. Uh, that's huge. Now the whole world's seeing this dick and balls. Isn't that in like Preacher? At one point, that farmer like has been working on something. It's like go fuck yourself, and it's yeah. like in his field, and the astronauts see it, and they're like, oh, what the I fuck? don't know why they hate astronauts so much. Just you know, it's an F you to planet. You know, not everyone has that bird's eye view, I guess. Yeah, you know? it's like, so fuck I... the International Space Station. <laughs> These people are very close-minded. They want the wall, they want, they want borders. <laughs> They're like, you got fucking every country up there in that space station all shaking hands and hanging out. Sometimes you just need to convey a message that only one person, it's like the messenger, okay? It's like, I don't hate astronauts, but I want the astronauts I hate to the tell idea of everybody <laughs> else. Be like, hey, this guy says hey, collectively to planet Earth, fuck yourself. Yeah. And you're like, all right, well, okay. I think he's just a little jealous. Hey, I, you know what, I, I commend his efforts. Or, you want to go live on an island? You want to burn a giant dick in the earth? Freedom, baby, 2018. Or it was just like a teenage alien. Or it was a teenage alien. Now there's a conspiracy theory. I, that's you know, a fun conspiracy. That's a fun one, man. Yeah. Not a reptile lords controlling Hillary. No, no a fun teenage alien. Yeah. Like my favorite Saturday morning cartoons. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Denver, the last dinosaur. <laughs> you could have done this too. I'd be like, hey, right. fun fact, Denver, the last dinosaur, He's he's been dead for a while by all like accounts, just like, you know, recently the Bush's baked beans dog died. I heard that. I was like, wow, that dog must be old. No, apparently they've been cycling through Bush's for dogs years. for years. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But uh, any animal, even a dinosaur, especially a dinosaur, long since dead if you watch it as a, sh as a all, child. All our idols are, are in the ground. Did, I wonder if they stuff any famous animals. Surely. Surely like the Beethoven, they got stuffed somewhere. Oh yeah? Probably. Yeah, the first Bush's big, first is, the first Jake. Yeah. Right? He's, He's like, mounted in the guy's house. In the museum, yeah. And it has like a sign around its neck that like, it says like, I tried to, I tried to tell the secret family recipe and look at what happened. Okay. It's like, it's a scary, threat. Yeah. It's a threat to the other dogs. <laughs> Damn, I didn't see that The first one coming. stuffed as a threat. Yeah, that's a plot twist right there. Tourists told to stop taking selfies in Fukushima nuclear disaster zone. Tourists told to stop taking selfies in Fukushima, Fukushima, Fukushima. Nuclear disaster zone. I mean, who who wants to do that, right? Who wants to take a selfie behind radioactive shit, right? Nobody wants to do that. I did it, and look how I turned out to be. So maybe you want to do that. Do you want to become deformed and do this? You know, I guess that's not too bad. You know what? Go to Fukushima, take a selfie at a nuclear disaster zone, and come back and be Ricky Berwick. <laughs> Seriously, don't do that. It's, it's dangerous. Listen to your government. Except for that rent -a cop that tells you to stop recording at Walmart. Fuck that rent -a cop. Fuck him! Can I swear? Hey, I'm Ricky Berwick. Thanks for having me on here. And if you want, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Ricky Berwick. Alright. Great. Awesome. Am I done? Am I fucking done? Can I, can I fucking swear? Anyways, thank you for joining us for Weekly Weird News this week. Be sure to check out other episodes, and thank you, Brett, for popping in. I, ha I can only come back once you'd escape the long shadow of Machinima, uh, even though I do stuff with Machinima. But, you know, it's important to be independent, burn your own crop circles, burn your burn own... Burn your own fucking, bridges. Yeah, yeah, burn your own, absolutely burn your yeah. own bridges. So welcome to the, the free side of the wall, man. Yeah, well, knock on... That's, that's wood, <laughs> so no, we'll knock on that. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye-bye.